Hello, welcome to another review of Drones Visual. Well, I should not really say a review because today I will mostly show you an incident that happened to me a while ago when testing a camera mount for the Wakira F210 FPV Razor. However, before I move on to talking about the incident itself, I would like to do a brief mention and show you a little bit the item that, was, that I was supposed to review. After all, we get all these products to review, so I do need to create some content about it. As many of you know, the Wakera F210 and the F210 3D, which is the one I have over here, uh, have a very peculiar design. I would dare to say that it's a design that appeals to many. However, one big issue with the design is that it can be a little bit hard to find a proper place uh, to place your action camera, whether it's a ROM cam or a Mobius or a GoPro. Wakera came up with a solution to this a while ago. I mean, this is not a new solution or anything like that. It's been already in the market for a while, but I'm just gonna show you now. The item consists of a very simple camera mount that should allow you to place any action camera on your F210. Yes, you can place an SJ cam, a Xiaoyi, a GoPro, a ROM cam, whatever you want on your FPV razor. The unit provides a really nice, decent solution. Has, it would not only allow you to place your action cam on the quad, but it also would allow you to change the angle of the camera in uh, as it suits you best basically the only downside is that well i mean your camera is just secured by some straps and it's very exposed but no solution is perfect and uh, this one is certainly far from being perfect but it does the job i also haven't seen any other solutions for the f210 out there uh, although there might be some and if you know of any please just drop me the link uh, on the comment section as you can see, the unit consists mostly of two parts, or perhaps three, if you count the plastic mount where the carbon fiber plate attaches. Uh, the included strap uh, will hold the camera in place. And depending on what camera you're using, I mean like Mobius sort of like wrong cam shape or GoPro, you will need to change the position of the strap. Placing the unit on your quad capture is really easy. You just need to attach the U-shaped plastic mount on the section right behind the FPV camera. Uh, there are two openings for the screws that keep uh, the unit in place and those open openings must align with the openings of the plastic mount of the U-shaped sort of plastic uh, unit. So it should look like this once you place it. Now let's just go ahead and uh, place a GoPro here so you can see more or less how it looks. Um, the camera itself should uh, rest on the carbon fiber plate and it will be secured in place by uh, by the strap. Uh, I think using an anti-slippery or anti-slipping rubbery uh, mat under would not hurt. You can also adjust the camera to your convenience. If you're flying aggressively, you might want the angle of your action camera to match, match the angle of the FPV camera. And then here is like how you would attach a Mobius camera to, to it. And uh, this is how it looks from the side. So if you're using a wrong cam or a Mobius, you just need to change the position of the straps and attach it in that way. Uh, okay, so, I mean, I have been trying the camera mount for a while already. Then I decided to start uh, recording. I had already used uh, the stock battery of the F210 and the only battery, I had two batteries left only, two, both of 1500 milliamps, one from each end and one, the one I'm using now that is on label. The battery, felt all right initially, although the whole setup was maybe a little bit too heavy. The battery was considerably heavier than the 1300 milliamps battery that comes with the F210. Uh, and also the camera on the front made the quad rather heavy, but still you could fly it nicely and have some fun. I was lucky to find some nice spot without people for testing it. And it was really exciting to fly there. Uh, when I was flying on the second round, right when I started to, you know, stepping on the gas, something unexpected took place as I and then basically you know the quad uh, I lost uh, video signal initially when I took the goggles off I had no idea about what had gone wrong I was flying on a straight line I mean no visible obstacles or anything like that it didn't take long for me to actually see some smoke in the distance that's when I took my GoPro and I started to run towards the quad and I understood obviously what was going on. Initially, I ran fast thinking that there would be some possibility to save the quad and the camera. However, as I started to get close, it became, well, I became a little bit concerned about the you know, battery exploding. After all, the battery was fully charged and uh, I heard no explosion yet. So, I mean, I had before a 4S LiPo battery blow, you know, blow up in my place, blowing up in my place. So it was really scary. <laughs> 
and uh, I didn't want that to happen again. Uh, initially, uh, I saw the camera that I was using to record is the Hawkeye Firefly S7, which as you can see was in not very good shape. Actually, the battery uh, ruptured. Uh, the camera, obviously, the, the quad was sort of going forward, so it kind of landed on the camera. It was not in good shape. And then I noticed uh, that the amount of smoke coming from the combusting battery was becoming less, so I kind of like man up and uh, got a little bit closer to the quad. And I would strongly advise anybody uh, against doing this, as the battery can indeed explode at some point, sending some particles and debris your way. But I still had the hope to save the aircraft. I then proceeded to kick the quad a little bit, and luckily the battery fell out uh, from you know from inside it. And the quad seemed to be uh, all right. I mean, there were some plastic components sort of burned, but uh, overall it seemed fine. Uh, one thing I felt I needed to recover was the anti-slipping or anti-sliding, whatever you want to call it, rubbery mat that I use under my batteries so they don't shift position. I grabbed it from under the battery, which uh, by now seemed to be like a volcano after the eruption. The first thing that surprised me was the fact that besides that uh, the camera was not in, go in good condition after the crash, it still was recording and fully functional, you know. Um, I mean, not really fully functional because the rare display was sort of like knocked out cold, but it was capable of recording without problems. The front display worked fine. Uh, the flickering you can see is just because of the shorter speed of the GoPro, you know, but the display was actually perfectly fine. And uh, I mean, yeah, the camera was sort of in good shape and I could save the video. You know, sometimes when the video recording is interrupted and the video file might get corrupted. No, everything was perfect, basically. The next thing I wanted to do was to check whether the quad itself had survived. The combustion of the battery caused many of the plastic components to partially melt. As you may know, the housing for the flight controller in this quad is located right under the battery. I fear that the heat coming from the basically the burning battery could have caused some wires or critical components to suffer some damage. Uh, in my opinion, the anti-sliding or anti-slippery or anti, you know, whatever you want to call it, that rubbery sort of mat under the battery played an important role shielding the flight controller. Uh, without it, the plastic housing protecting the flight controller would have probably melted like an ice cream on a hot summer day. The housing of the flight controller appeared to be intact despite being an inch away from the battery. That was already a good sign, but the heat could have still uh, affected or damaged some other components of the quad. Uh, the only visible sort of like damaged components were mostly the antennas uh, and then some other plastic components sort of around, but overall it looked uh, nice. Um, anyways, I needed to test uh, whether the quad was functional or not. The carbon fiber plates supporting the battery plug were a little bit broken, but nothing serious, and these are easily replaceable. Once I managed to, uh, you know, get the battery actually connected, and then I heard the beeping sound coming from the quad, I knew that most likely it was still alive and functional. I then uh, went ahead and uh, proceeded to connect the transmitter to double check that the receiver was functional as well. And then when once I connected the, the receiver and tested the motors and so on, I realized that everything was functioning properly. And basically this quad was ready for another flight despite the injuries it suffered uh, in the fall. Most of the components that I uh, need to replace are rather cheap. A lateral carbon fiber plates, landing gear, antennas and the battery plug support. So the quad has survived a nice fall and a bursting battery without much problems. Even uh, the camera support is sort of like half alive and for the camera, well, despite its heavy life-threatening injuries, it's still operational and I'll find a way to continue using it. I think the morale of the story uh, could be to try to choose wisely your batteries, always expect the unexpected when flying, uh, choose your flying locations wisely, Make sure there aren't people around as nobody will feel uh, pleased if a smoking quad about to burst uh, lands on their head. Uh, I would also suggest that you don't really get close to your lipos while they're uh, burning like this. Keep your lipos also in special fire retardant bags or boxes as I mean this was a brand new lipo and it bursted so 
you never know with these with these uh, batteries. As a camera support, uh, as, I mean the camera support sort of uh, I liked it, yeah, because I need to mention also about this camera support here. Uh, it's great for this quad, despite keeping the camera vulnerable. I guess what makes it great is that well, there are not many other choices out there. So if you really want to have an action cam on your uh, F210. I think that's probably the best choice out there. Uh, you saw though that your camera will be vulnerable when using it, but provided you don't crash like that, uh, it should be fine. If you're interested in, um, in this camera support, I place a link in the description of the video so you can check it out. If you find my video interesting or useful, please give me a thumbs up and drop me some comments. I always appreciate hearing from you and I do my best to reply to all comments. If you feel that I did I'll mention something silly, just drop me some comments as well, in that way we will all learn and benefit. Those of you that are interested in the topic of drones and would like to get the latest news directly from China, do not hesitate and subscribe to my channel and I hope to see you all in my next video.